regard. That's very nice. I send mine back. Okay. I know what I'm going to get because... Of <laughs> First of all, I'm going to give you this. Of yeah. course, you told me that you like sure this very, very much. I used much. to like this. I used to like this very much. I'm not sure if I'd attempt it these days. I think I'll leave it to the stronger men. But it's, it's an interesting beverage. You're a very creative and uh, versatile person. What keeps you going? What's your motive? Uh, do you know, I often wonder. I mean, it's... I think I wonder more at the end of a tour. Um, because I feel uh, drained and finished and tired, you know, and I always think that that's always going to be the last tour I'll ever do because I can't do that again. It's too tiring. It's but then the years build up. That's why I don't tour every year because if I can't, I've never been able to understand bands who can tour year after year after year because I don't know where they get the new energy or the new excitement to make the show special or different or something like that. You know, it's and for me after the first year I start. I see an idea and I think that would be great on stage. And the second year, there's some more ideas. And by the third year, I've, I'm starting to write a show. And then I really want to go back on stage. So it, it just builds up, I think, you know. It's like writing, the same thing happens. There's all of a sudden, there's something inside you and you just have to express it. And if I, if I weren't doing this, I would be doing it through painting. But, uh, what, what can we expect of your new show? You said there were... There's well, going to be a lot of drama in it? Yes, drama, as well as theatrics. I try to define, I, if I can now, define the two. Is that theatrics in terms of lights and props and what it looks like, that's one thing. But it's the dramatic content for me that's always been the more interesting thing. I've never actually just relied on the props. I think that's too easy and it's, it gets sort of Alice Cooper or something. Sorry, Alice, but it's true, babe. And, it's, and I wanted it to, I want this one particularly to have a very strong dramatic text. You've played many roles, Ziggy Stardust and uh, Thin White Duke. What role are you playing now, if you're playing any? Um, yeah, well, that's about it, you know. They did stop after Thin White Duke. That was uh, the last time was 76, with that kind of role. Um, I felt far more confident after that period of performing on my own without characters. And that's what I really proceeded to do for the next few years. In fact, I only did two tours during that time. One was the 78 tour, which was like really trying to find out what I'm like as an artist on stage. And 83 was really the first tour where I felt quite relaxed about saying, I'm a songwriter and these are my songs. And I performed the songs like that. But then the urge to want to do theatrics comes back in again and you want to do some more. So that's why I'm going for a very strongly theatrical show this time. But it's not... As but it's not in character. No, no. Maybe the nearest I get to character in it is Rock's, Rock's singer. Not this person or that person. And it's a look at, really, uh, it's my ideas on how Rock relates to society. It, it's, that's what I'm trying to do. But it'll be kind of fragmented. It'll be almost like in uh, Expressionist theatre something maybe it'll owe more to say george kaiser or bertolt brecht than it does to uh rock and roll in a way it'll be interesting i don't know we'll see half of it's in the rehearsals i'm excited by it <laughs> yeah i can see that yeah. what's the influence of iggy pop in your career uh well jim and i met we met oh we both met uh, the same night at max's kansas city in 1971 i think it was with lou reed so there's the three of us at the table None of us had anything to say to each other. It was really a terrible meeting. Uh, but individually, I got to know them both. And I started working with them both then. And Lou finally kind of just dropped out of rock life for a bit and just lived around New York. And I was no longer living there, so I'd lost touch with him. But uh, Iggy and I have uh, known each other constantly since 1971. I mean, we're really very tight buddies, and we have been. And he and his wife and myself and my girlfriend go skiing all the time. I mean, Iggy Pop skis, and he's a very good skier, very good skier. And uh, uh, we've always bounced off each other ideas all the time because we're very different to each other. He uh, thinks a lot differently to me. He, in fact, is the academic. He's far more intellectual in his approach to things. And I am an intuitive. I know it, you probably think it would be the other way yeah, around, but yeah. it's not. I'm, I'm totally intuitive about what I do. But uh, Jimmy is a very accurate uh, and per, uh, perceptive thinker about how things are put together and why things are like they are. So we have interesting uh, times. Hey, he writes songs for you? You, you produce his no, uh, He's never written a song for me. I've, I guess my forte is in strong melody. And uh, 
I think I, I think Jim's poetry, his actual lyrics, are, are stunningly good. I think he's a great American writer, real American writer. And uh, the combination of putting my melodies with his uh, lyrics has often worked out real good. Um, and I always try to, on my albums, cover at least one of uh, the songs that either we've written together or he's written on his own. To, because they've been on old albums of his that didn't do too great and uh, in sales and whatever, and not many people heard them. So it's a good chance to show his songs to people. When I listen to your album, you have a song there, 87 and Cry. Yeah. I get the feeling about that song that you have a pessimistic view over future, over things It happening. is a little bit, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it, I never know how You can make love things, with money, and yeah, you can make, make mistakes. mistakes with babies, yeah. It's, um, it, I, the whole thing came out of just feelings about uh, England and London initially. You see, it's very hard for me to write direct lyrics. I've never, Iggy's much better than that, and, and The Clash or, or, or Dylan or somebody can write far straighter than me in that way direct. My songs always tend to be impressionistic or even have a surreal quality to them. And on this album is the first time that I've really tried to adapt to a didactic kind of approach to songwriting. It's, it's been an experiment for me, but it's, some of it, I think, works real good, and some of it, I, I'm not sure if it works real good, but they're still interesting songs. And 87 and Cry, the input of it was very much the Thatcherite England and uh, the repression on working classes and unemployed. Uh, it keeps permeating the album, generally, actually, not just that one song, but I keep refocusing on those things. They seem to be the grist of my mill at the moment, but one changes, one focuses all the time. Are there things you really would like to do that you haven't done yet? Do you know, I go, I'm, I'm really real lucky, I guess, in, in... I really have been able to do most of the things I've ever wanted to do, with the exception of directing a movie, which even that, it looks very likely I might be doing one next year, because I bought the rights to a book that I've admired for a long time, and I can't tell you what that is. This sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Um, but it's a super book, and it's about the problems that teenagers have at a certain age when they're falling in love with each other, but the, the adult thing around them is so hard and so tough. And, but the story is an excellent story. And it's a small film. It's a small, intimate film. And uh, I'm going to attempt to direct. I've had enough practice now with doing videos that I'm going to try and increase from four minutes to 90 minutes. It's a big jump. It's a big jump, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Are you going to be in it yourself? No. No, I'm directing that one. Any acting plans? Not really. You got any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I can think of some. Um, I, I, it looks like there's a few things on the burner for me to be doing in next year. If I have to, but the essential things that I really want to do, if I have time for anything else, I do them. But the three essential things is that I've got so much uh, more ideas for songs for the, another album plus the Jagger film, plus the one I want to direct. I don't think I'm going to have any time to do anything else next year. <laughs> okay, thank you very, very thank much. Thank you very much indeed.